I'm Sarah Cooper, and I have an announcement to make. I am not going to be the next Vice President of the United States. It was down to me and Kamala, but Joe wanted to go with someone who has experience. The good news is, I now have the night free to guest host this show. If you don't know who I am, that's OK. I don't know who you are either, so we're even. Basically, I'm the reason your grandpa downloaded TikTok. But don't blame me. Blame my nephews, Ryan and Tyler. If they hadn't shown me TikTok, I never would have started lip syncing a certain stable genius. Because he hasn't taken any cognitive tests because he couldn't pass one. I actually took one when I uh, very recently when I uh, when I was, you know, the radical left was saying, is he all there? Is he all there? And I proved I was all there because I, I aced it. I aced the test. And they said a female president would be too emotional. Once a month, she'll go crazy, they said. Can you imagine a president who only goes crazy once a month? But without a crazy president, I wouldn't be here. So thanks, Trump, Tower Moscow. This year has been insane. I'm sorry, that's offensive. This year has been presidential. I started this year doing a late night set at a pizza place in Jersey City. Now, here I am, hosting a late night show in a vacant house. Actually, the number of people in the audience is exactly the same. I've never hosted a late night show before, so I did a little research and I figured out the three things I can do to look like a late night TV host. Number one, the point. Nailed it. Number two, the hand clasp. Got it. Number three, the look like I'm explaining something. Who's ready for a deep dive on voter suppression? I'm also excited because for the first time ever, I have my very own sidekick. Guillermo, how are you? I'm doing good, Sarah. So tell me, how does Jimmy usually relax before the show? I think he cried for a minute. Oh, great. I do that every day. I've come a long way to be here tonight, emotionally and geographically. I was born in Jamaica. My whole family is Jamaican, and they always give me a hard time for being the least Jamaican member of the family. But I think it's their fault for naming me Sarah. Sarah Cooper sounds like a character on the OC who was written out in season two, and it's like she moved into my body and gentrified my whole personality. When I was little, my mom would cook this amazing Jamaican food, and I'd be like, Mom, this jerk chicken is like really spicy. And she'd say, Sierra, you know there are children around the world, all they get for dinner is bread and water. And I'd be like, that actually sounds really good. If I could get a scone and a chai tea latte, Mom, that would be amazing. When I ran that joke by my mom, she said, Sierra, why you make me sound like I'm from Barbados? I'm still working on the accent. One stereotype about Jamaicans is that we all smoke weed, and I do sometimes smoke weed, but only because it was recommended to me as a stress reliever by Gwyneth Paltrow. Before doing comedy, I used to work at Google. That's where I get my whole TED Talk vibe. People always ask me if it was fun to work at Google, and it was fun. I knew I was having fun because they kept telling me how much fun I should have each quarter or else I would be fired. They had fun names for everybody, like the older Googlers are called Greglers, and the new Googlers are called Nooglers. They had some trouble coming up with a name for the black Googlers, though, so finally they decided to just call them David and Sean. They didn't realize I was black. I think they thought I was Indian because they kept promoting me. I ran that joke by my dad, and he said, Sierra, you are Indian. You're from the West Indies. I sounded German that time. I'll, I'll stop. I heard this rumor that the software engineers at Google are so proud of working there that they have sex with their badges on. <laughs> That's a joke. They do not have sex. My husband hates that joke because he's a software engineer at Google. And now he's married, so he's really not having any sex. I met my husband at work. He kept asking me out, and I kept saying no. But then he said he had tickets to see Louis C.K., who was my favorite comedian at the time. And I couldn't say no to that. No one can say no to Louis C.K. That's kind of his whole brand. Like many of you, my husband and I have been working from home over the past few months. He's on video conference calls all day. And we're all in a lot of meetings, so I thought I'd give you all some of my favorite tricks to look smart in meetings. Like one of the tricks is to translate percentages into fractions. So if someone says, 25% of our customers bought this shirt, you can say, oh, about one in four, and make a little note of it, and people will be super impressed with your quick math skills. Another one is just to ask, will this scale? No matter what it is, just ask if it's going to scale. No one even knows what that means. 
but it's a great catch-all question and it definitely makes you look smart. But my favorite trick is just to ask the presenter to go back one slide. So if someone's giving a presentation, just stop them and go, I'm sorry, could you just go back one slide, please? At that moment, all your coworkers will think you're gonna brilliantly point out something on that slide that they all missed. But you can kind of just look at the slide for a few moments and go, huh. Okay, we can move on. Total power move. You know Donald Trump uses that trick all the time. He does. I've gotten deep inside Donald Trump's head and let me tell you, it is lonely in there. It's just me and a person, woman, man, camera, TV. Oh, and a bucket of chicken. But you know what? I'm sick of talking about Trump. Part of the reason I was so excited to guest host tonight is because I wanted to show everyone that I'm more than my Trump impressions. So I asked my followers to send in some questions about the real me. Let's take a look. Hey, Sarah, I love your Trump impressions, but do you ever feel like you're starting to become more like him? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. You ask a lot of stupid questions. Okay, go ahead, next question. Hey, Sarah, how many new followers have you gotten since your Trump impressions went viral? I have so many followers. You know, I have five different platforms. You add it all up, and it's like over 150 million people. That's a tremendous amount of people. Thank you. So if Trump loses in November, are you still going to be doing impressions of him? Maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. Hey, Sarah. It was my birthday on Sunday, and I was wondering if you could wish me a happy birthday. And you can just do it as yourself. You don't have to do it as Donald Trump. Earlier this week, I understand you marked another important milestone. I know everyone here joins me in wishing you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, uh, Sarah, congratulations on hosting Jimmy Kimmel Live. I, I was wondering, ha have you ever met Jimmy? And if so, what's he like? Jimmy Kimmel, no talent. Two or three times I did a show before this all. Now I wouldn't do a show, a guy's terrible. Oh, but aren't you doing his show like right now? Everybody knew I was being sarcastic and joking. When I first got to know Jim, I said, uh, huh. Never wears a jacket. He's obviously very proud of his body. There he is, look at that guy. You're the champ, you're the best. So there you have it. Now you know the real me.